how many of you have a dream or a goal you want to achieve in your life? Raise your hand. All of you. Okay. So how many of you think our dream is far away from our real life? Okay, some of you. So sometimes the distance between our dream and our reality is so huge. Sometimes it's like from Earth to Mars. Recently, I'm attending an online course from Robin Sharma. He's a, one of the top leadership experts. He has sold 15 million books over 96 countries. So I'm going to share some great thoughts from him today. In order to get our dream come true, the first thing is devotion. We can have love and dreams, but if we don't get traction on our dreams, nothing is going to happen. Success is more about persistency and grit than natural talent. A boxer named Ray Boom Boom Massini, he was a champion in 1982. He said, my brother was more physically gifted than me. He had longer arms, he was taller, he was more powerful than me. But I have a lot of more hunger. So the devotion is very important because no idea is going, is going to work unless we do the work. And change is hard at the beginning, messy in the middle. At the end, transformation will be very beautiful. So if we want to have the results of only 5% of population has, we need to willing to be willing to do what 5% of population does. Ordinary people, well, we love being busy, being busy, but the true leaders, they love get the real results. So ordinary people love entertainment, but the leaders love education. The ordinary people love gossip or, you know, uh, talking about other stuff, complaining, but the true leaders, they love rolling up their sleeves and getting the most important things done. So sometimes we, you know, in, in real life we spend a lot of time watching TV, videos, surfing the web, and we are often mindlessly doing things that do not improve our personal life, spiritual life, intellectual life, our impact on the world. For myself, every morning when I woke up, I just uh, list a, a, a long list to do today. But during the day, I'm busy like checking emails, you know, reading a message from Facebook, WeChat, and reading articles and uh, on social media, answering phone calls. And at the end of my day, I'm like, wow, I still have a long list. So the devotion is that we can have what we want done. But it's not about like dreaming it. It's about we need to rolling up our sleeves and doing it. Second thing is small daily acts of greatness. Small daily improvements done every day creates revolution of mastery. So think about this. If we are making like 1% of improvements every day in one area which we really want to improve, and if we do it like 30 days in a row, we can make 30% of improvements on that area. If we keep doing that, we can be an expert of that area. So the small, steady improvements really win the race. We all know 
uh, Kobe Bryant is one of the legendary in an NBA. And a lot of people think, oh, uh, he is gifted. We are not gifted, so we cannot do great things. Well, it's a great excuse. We don't have to do anything. And there was a trainer. He shared a story with Kobe one time. He said he got a text message from Kobe at 2 a.m. in the morning saying Kobe wanted to train. So he met Kobe in the gym. They trained for hours and they did running uh, hoops and all kind of exercise for hours and hours. Then the trainer left. He went home, got some sleep, and hung out with his family. At 10 a.m. in the morning, the trainer showed up for the practice with the rest of Vegas there with Kobe. The coach walked to Kobe and said, wow, you did a great job in the middle of, of the night. And it was amazing that you were so, so devoted. And you wanted to train that hard and that devoted at that time of the day. So what did you do afterwards? Kobe, still in sweat, and he looked at his trainer, said, what do you mean what did I do afterwards? I stay here in the gym. So genius is not about our genetics. It's more about our habits, our devotion, our persistency, and our commitment to follow through our dreams and our passion and our daily goals. So fellow Toastmasters, let's all think of uh, our great dream today. And we know we can get it done. And we will get it done if we have devotion, if we can do the small daily acts of greatness every day. So let's all dream big, so start small, and begin now. Our table topic. Uh, let's welcome our table topic master, Jia. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome back. I see a lot of friends are coming back from vacations and spring breaks. So uh, today I bring 365 table topics. Oh, I guess I'm going to go over them. But uh, this is a, it's a very interesting, very um, uh, very good uh, list of the table topic questions uh, that I found on the internet. And uh, these questions are brief. So what I'd like to do is um, let you pick one of the questions, uh, kind of get randomly. Um, but before doing that, I, I just want to explain why I want to do this. Last week I talked with Marty about um, how to promote people talking. <laughs> Uh, through the table topic questions. And uh, Marty mentioned something about, like, you know, you, you want to motivate, you want to have a connection with the audience and bring up some questions that are interesting and let people feel like they are passionate to, to talk about it. So I thought, wow, that's a great idea. So when I see this list of questions, I feel, oh, these are great questions. I want to talk about it for each of the questions. So I think this will be good um, for people, you know, I just feel, oh, I, I really want to talk about it, and hopefully we can get that response. So what I'd like to do is um, you think about or pick a number, no, you pick a birth date from yourself or your family member, but the, 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 the birth date has to be less than 365. For example, like today is April 7th, so you can pick, I mean, for example, this is your dad's birthday, and you can say, I want to pick 47. So I go through 47 question. Here it says, what has life taught you recently? So and then that will be your question to answer. So everybody ready? I hope uh, everybody get put, uh, motivated. OK, anyone want to talk first? This is you want to talk first? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a birthday. Uh, January 1st. OK. 
Oh. <laughs> okay, that'd be 11, right? Okay. So, um, your question is, do you think crying is a sign of weakness or stress? That's a good one. Yeah, I think crying, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's not a, just a weakness. I believe it's also kind of strength. Because let's say people has, have pressure and have uh, some softness, but I think you need a channel to release your kind of pain or your anger or maybe anything maybe unhealthy. That when you cry, that's actually you, typically you will feel much more relieved and also you will calm down after maybe crying. Maybe you can begin to think about maybe what this really means to you and actually you can work out a plan to make a, a better you. That's, I, that's what I think about crying. Great speech, thank you, Lesson. Uh, you remind me about crying because I have been in America probably about 30, no, 20 years. And in uh, recent years, I realized um, I never could cry. <laughs> in first, uh, probably I would say 15 years, it's just recently five years, I start to cry again because when I was a little, I, I loved to cry. Like everything, I just easily uh, to, you know, about tears. Um, but I don't know why, uh, since I'm in America, I just barely cry. I mean, even like a hard time, I don't know why. I, I feel like that, that's bad because I cannot express my feeling. I cannot ventilate my feeling. So now I'm glad I can cry again. So, okay, so next one. Well, this is the one. That, okay, 70. 28. 28, okay, 28, oh, I love this question. What makes you smile? <laughs> <laughs> what makes you smile? Good afternoon, I feel like it's very philosophical today. There's so many different <laughs> avenues, which is great. This is a wonderful question. What makes me smile? I think in life, there's so many things that can make you smile. Personally, I feel even a little achievement that my daughter can do, Maybe putting her clothes on, that can make me smile. Uh, any nice words people say to you, uh, that makes me smile. I feel it, it's a state of smiling, maybe it's a state of mind. If you start being able to appreciate things around you, many things can make, you, make me smile. And, and it's a, actually it's also very healthy. When you smile, you just immediately feel fulfilled, you feel like you have everything you need to do whatever you need. I, and I think today many people talk about emotions, talk about purpose, and I think be able to smile is a, is a way of showing your appreciation. And that is the key, one of the key emotions that we need to have. Now, forgiveness is also too, right? Once you have that appreciation for, for a gratitude, um, forgiveness, it brings you, um, now it makes me, um, think about, someone talk about the six emotions that you, you need to bring up every day, and those are key. And smile definitely brings you gratitude and uh, appreciation. Thank you. Very great, great thought. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Yeah, smile is, is such an important emotion that we should have every day. And I remember your uh, Matthew said something about the smile. I'll pick my brother's birthday, July 15th. July 15th, that be is... <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. How about 15th? 15th, okay. Uh, if not now, then when? <laughs> That's your question. <laughs> I chose my brother's birthday. Um, my brother is Joe Jalove, and he's a little bit younger than me, and he's my hero. He really is. He's an amazing guy, and this question is so perfect for him. If not now, when? His entire life has always been now. Now is the time to do it. He's an amazing guy. He, right away when he was young, um, in school, he went and joined the military. He was in 